It's another day here at the Come Back to you Studio. And this is your host, Beck Lover. And you're watching another episode, Interesting Times Podcast, right here on the Beck Lover Podcast, where I gather all the interesting stories to tell you what's going on, what I think's going on. You stay tuned right here, my friends. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you going. Know. It's been a while since my last broadcast. I apologize to all of you. I think I finally got this mobile studio up and running. I like the quality of the sound. Watching the episode on YouTube, Spotify, or Rumble. Make sure you drop a comment and let me know. I need to work on it a little bit more. Can you hear me loud and clear, my friends? In any event, there's so much going on. So much to catch up on. Just to let you know, I was recently on... Inside True Crime Podcast with Matthew Cox. Matt Cox is a former criminal. Uh, he appeared on my show, The Comeback Team, which I will be reaching very soon, where I interview lives, things they've been through, kind of how they got through times. He's quickly become a rising podcast star. He's surpassed me, I put it in this industry. He's appeared on podcasts like Lex Friedman, been on Fresh and Fit podcast, and he now has over 400,000 subscribers on his channel, Inside True Crime with Cox. He allowed me to be a guest on his show where we didn't discuss crime, which is usually not what his content's about. I'm happy to say that that episode has had over a quarter views how we discuss what's going on in America, where we're at now, and where we might be going. So. Head over to the Inside Truth, Matthew Cox, and check out my episode. Out of the ordinary, so were the amount of you. So it's my friends, followers who support my work. I hope you check out the episode. It was very explosive. And I have some other podcasts coming down the road. If none other than Danny Jones, discuss some very serious issues in the world, religion, women, stuff in any event make sure you hit that sub button drop a comment tell your friends and family about it. been working very hard i want to thank all of you stay loyal in any event let's get this show going interesting times interesting times indeed friends if you have an account with chase bank you may have found a way to have access to money that's really not yours and it's been a big controversy at Chase Bank. This is reported by Yahoo News. Chase says viral bank glitch trend is actually fraud. A cybersecurity expert explains why financial hacks that seem too good to be true usually are. A series of recent viral videos have made it seem like people were getting free cash from Chase Bank ATMs after depositing fake checks for large amounts and withdrawing the money before the bounce. Videos, which spread across TikTok and X over the weekend, suggested to viewers that this was a way to cheat a glitch in the banking system. However, in a statement to Yahoo News, a Chase spokesperson emphasized that this isn't a harmless internet trend, but it is fraud, plain and simple. So I'll explain that to you. Um, I also use remote deposit. If I get a check, I can take a picture of my check with my phone, the app of my bank, I take a picture of the front of the check and the back of the check, and I've endorsed the signature. You can deposit, if I'm not mistaken, up to 20000 on some of these checks remotely. And they make a portion of that balance based on how good your relationship is with the bank. They make a portion of that available immediately. So what these stupid internet videos were recommending you do is deposit a check that's really not valid, okay? And then they make that temporary balance available, and then you would withdraw that money immediately and use it in cash. Yeah, that's fraud, okay? You're taking a picture of something that is not real to withdraw money out of the bank. Any of you that may be engaged in that, I would tell you that that is definitely not a smart thing to do. Not do that. I would highly recommend not doing that because 
you're going to either A, overdraft your account, or they're just going to take the money, your existing funds in the bank, and they will come after you to the full extent of the law. So it's just fraud. It is. You're withdrawing funds that don't exist. Yahoo News cannot verify if anyone who posted videos about the Chase ATM glitch actually committed the crime. One video that had been reposted by multiple accounts on X had gotten thousands of shares show a group of men celebrating after allegedly pulling a hack. However, a closer look at the cash they're holding reveals it says motion picture purposes. The creator of another widely circulated video, which allegedly showed his bank account with 40000 in debt, celebrated on Instagram that news outlets were sharing his posts and told followers to message him if they wanted something from his account. Chase confirmed with Yahoo News that it was aware of the trend but did not answer whether the bank was working with the full how many customers tried to participate. The scheme is not a far-fetched idea and does pull from another fraudulent practice called check hiding, where customers write bad checks between two different bank accounts with insufficient funds, take advantage of the time it takes for banks to clear the check by essentially inflating their account balances with imaginary money. Check hiding is illegal and the ramifications of getting caught Doing it can include jail time and hefty fines, even for a first-time offender. It's a criminal offense. Financial institutions are highly vigilant about fraudulent activities, and once you're flagged for fraud, it can result in your account being frozen or permanently. According to Forbes, around 80% of young adults get their financial advice from social media. So I really wonder, and just knowing how stupid people are, they've done things like putting detergent pods in their mouth because it was trending on TikTok. I guarantee you, 18, 19, 20-year-olds who have no money, they're broke, they got nothing better to do, probably took advantage of that loophole, remote, you know, mobile deposit. And now there's going to be consequences for all of us who enjoy that convenience. They're probably not going to clear funds as easily. And uh, yeah, so done it. Governor Hochul, I call her horse face. God forgive me, but she's just, I don't like her. Okay? It has nothing to do, you know, the way she looks. But I just do not like this woman. She's not elected the governor. She took the position after the other guy got thrown out for all the allegations. Probably because he went against agenda. Hochul remains, this commercial, pay me. Fox News reports, Hochul remains confident in stating state's vetting process after X8 is accused of working for the Chinese Communist Party. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said she remains confident in the state's employees' vetting program after her former aide was recently arrested and accused of acting on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. Or China. China, as Donald Trump says. Hochul addressed reporters Wednesday, a day after Linda Sun. 40 years old, and her husband, Chris Hu, his last name is Hu, Hu, 41 were arrested. Son was charged with violating and conspiring to violate the Foreign Agents Registration Act, visa fraud, alien smuggling, and money laundering conspiracy. She had touted equity policies in her position. A newly resurfaced video from 2021 shows resurfaced video, which was Women in Government Leadership webinar, presented by the New York chapter of the non-for-profit Chu Chi Foundation, excuse me, was recorded on December 16, 2021. So, it's just another example, and this has been going on for decades. Whether she's guilty or not 100%, I don't know, and I don't like to presume anyone's guilty until they are proven guilty with evidence. But there has been several breaches of technology or protect government secrets throughout the years, not only on behalf of the Chinese government. Many foreign governments have stolen American technology and secrets by having their agents infiltrate our corporations at the highest levels and bringing their secrets and their clearance rights, accessing very sensitive files. I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't think anyone that's not born in the U.S. and has been a citizen for at least even I don't know man. Because of our open society, many times we're just being infiltrated by these foreign powers, and it's so easy for them to do. 
So now if she's found guilty, just keep in mind, we have someone working for a foreign government in a very powerful position in the most important city in America at the highest level, for the state, sorry, right? Not just for the city, the state. She works for the governor. Access to confidential conversations between the governor and other politicians and who knows what else. So imagine our enemies around the world know what's going on because they have agents literally in our offices, in our corporations. Erica, are in trouble. So, heard about the story, I've reported it over the last few weeks, about the astronauts that are still stuck in space. Boeing, I just took a Boeing back from Sarasota. And by the way, I was down there uh, last week, so that's kind of why I wasn't around. I was filming the four podcasts down there. Boeing will fly its empty capsule back to Earth soon. Two NASA astronauts will stay behind. Okay. Cape Canaveral, Florida, Associated Press. Boeing will attempt to return its problem-plagued capsule from the International Space Station later this week with empty seats. NASA said Wednesday that everything is on track for the Starliner capsule to undock from the space station Friday evening. The fully automated capsule will aim for a touchdown in New Mexico's White Sands missile range six hours later. NASA's two stuck astronauts who flew up on a Starliner will remain behind at the orbiting lab. They'll ride home with the SpaceX in February. Looks like Elon Musk is coming in to save the day. Eight months after launching on what should have been a week-long test flight, thruster trouble and helium leaks kept delaying their return until NASA decided that it was too risky for them to accompany Starliner to Earth. It's been a journey to get here, and we're excited to have Starliner return, said NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Stitch. NASA's Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams will close the hatches between Starliner and the space station on Thursday. They are now considered full-time station crew members, along with seven others on board, helping with experiments and maintenance and ramping up their exercise to keep their bones and muscles strong during their prolonged exposure to weightlessness. To make room for them on SpaceX's next taxi flight, the Dragon capsule will launch with two, ast two astronauts instead of the usual four. Two were cut late last week from the six-month expedition, which is due to blast off in late September. Boeing has to free up the, pack the parking place for SpaceX's arrival. Starliner's first test flight was so poorly in 2019, the capsule never reached the space chase in between because of software errors, sorry. The mission was repeated three years later. More problems surfaced, resulting in even more delays, more than $1 billion. I think Boeing has enough problems here on Earth right now with their airplanes that carry us just on Earth. But all the problems they have in space, I think Boeing should just hit right now. SpaceX is taking it. I think when SpaceX pulls this off, They'll just further their credibility in the space world and flight and rock and technology and social media by the man. We all heard the headlines today. Yet again, another mass shooting. Apalachee High School. Apalachee, sorry. I'm, guys, I'm a little rusty. It's been a Apalachee High School shooting. Four killed, suspect in custody after students evacuated from school near Atlanta. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation reported that at least four people are dead and nine others have been hospitalized with injuries after students were evacuated at Appalachee High School in Georgia on Wednesday following a school shooting. The suspect is in police custody. A 17-year-old student told ABC News that he was in chemistry class when he heard gunshots. He said his chemistry teacher locked the door as the rest of the class huddled in the back. Students said he could hear gunshots and screams, and at one point, someone banged on the classroom door and shot it open up multiple times. A student in his class were later evacuated to the school field. One student told a reporter for Fox 5 Atlanta that he initially thought the gunshots were fake until he heard screaming. He described being evacuated from the scene of body in rooms. There was a gun lying on the ground with the bullets and the blood. They prepare you for these things, a 15-year-old told the New York Times. But in that moment, I started crying. I got nervous. And again, school shootings, unfortunately, way too common in the U.S. The fact that we still don't have 
you know, honestly, metal detectors at this point in every single school. People are out of their mind. But what I would like is I would like a toxicology report on these shooters. I would like to know if this kid was on any type of antidepressants or psychotropic drugs. I know they're going to blame guns, but you still have to be a sick person to do it. Period. You've seen in other countries where they don't have any firearms that they still commit murder. Cars and all types of other devices and knives and stabbing. So really, we need to find out what the core problem is with these people mentally. This is them to do stuff. Mongolia. That's a place you never hear about. Mongolia was meant to arrest Russia's President Putin last night. It did it, and now it's in trouble. There's nothing remarkable about Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to Mongolia on Tuesday. He's due to meet Mongolia's leader, hold talks on developing bilateral ties, and attend a gala reception. What is unusual is that Mongolia, as a member of the International Criminal Court, should have arrested the Russian president as soon as he landed on Mongolian soil Monday evening. Mongolia's defiance of its obligations to the international court, criminal court are likely to have legal consequences. There's nothing remarkable about Russian President Vladimir Putin's visit to Mongolia on Tuesday. He's due to meet the country's leader, hold talks on developing ties. So basically, they wanted this guy to arrest one of the leaders in one of the most powerful countries in the world. They would have invaded Mongolia in seconds. If they arrested Vladimir Putin, the Russians would have leveled Mongolia. In seconds and extracted this guy out. Really? That's like telling, I don't know, Puerto Rico or like, not Puerto Rico. That's like telling Dominican Republic to arrest uh, Joe Biden. Are you kidding? We would invade him in seconds. Speaking of the Russians, there was a missile strike on Ukraine, a mili on the Ukrainian military college, kills dozens. Russia missiles, drones, again, crisscrossed Ukrainian skies on Monday night in strikes that killed more than 50 people and injured hundreds. Most of the casualties were reported at an attack in Paltova, according to officials. Two ballistic missiles struck the Paltova Military Communications Institute as well as nearby hospital, according to the President Vladimir Zelensky. At least 51 people were killed and 217 were injured in the attack. I have ordered a full and prompt investigation to all circumstances of what happened. This is reported by ABC News. Tate brothers arrive in court in Romania earlier today. Judges are due to rule on an appeal by prosecutors on last week's decision to place internet influencer Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan under judicial control. House arrest following the latest evidence produced in their new case. That's still developing. And again, that was after their controversial X space with Candace Owens and Dan. Incidents? I don't know. Drop a comment. This is retaliatory for them having that speech about a certain country in the Middle East and its influence here. Or do you think it's just continuation from what started with the Tate Brothers? Justice Department here in the U.S. has officially charged senior Hamas leaders for terrorism on what occurred on October 7th. Hezbollah pounds Galileo with over 100 rockets causing heavy damage but no injuries. Another cross-border battle between Israel and Lebanon. Israel's war on Gaza. Dozens killed by Israeli attacks on the Strip. 42 Palestinians were killed and 107 wounded in the latest 24-hour reporting period. There are Palestinian children are being vaccinated. Did loud explosions. Refugee camps for polio. Sure, that's what I would be worried about if I was Palestinian. I definitely wouldn't. RFK Jr.'s name must stay on the Michigan ballot. Judge rules in Axios. There's been a controversy because when he was an independent candidate for president, now that he's dropped out, there's a lot of states still holding his name on there, and they're worried that that'll affect votes in those states. Some of these courts are keeping RFK's name on the ballot. So how that affects selection in November, I do not know. Definitely doesn't help Trump. I think that's why RFK wants his name removed now that he has formally, formally endorsed Trump. Speaking of little Trump, Baron Trump to attend NYU in the break, family tradition. 18-year-old who has largely stayed out of the spotlight is strained from the family's tradition of attending the University of Pennsylvania and Ivy League. His father and three of his four siblings attended. 
he's going to go to NYU's Stern Business School, which is probably going to make life a living hell for many New Yorkers with the amount of security this kid's going to have around him. Clash between isolated indigenous group and loggers leaves two dead in Peru's Amazon. Two loggers in Peru's Amazon have been killed and two others are missing after a clash with Mashko Piro, an indigenous community that has long isolated itself. A local advocacy, advocacy organization said Tuesday, the clash occurred on Thursday in the area of Madre de Dios region when workers were opening a trial, sorry, a trail in the forest were attacked with arrows by members of the tribe. Okay, and I'll be honest with you, I feel bad for those workers because they're just doing their job. But these big lumber companies, like they need to really have respect for these indigenous tribes. They're the last of their kind in the entire world. Uncontacted. I mean, this is just amazing that they've been able to preserve their culture in today's modern world. And as they're chopping down the forest, which I'm also not a fan, they're exposing these tribes to the outside world. And that's not fair either, but it's sad that people are just trying to pay their bills working for these logging companies had to pay the price and get shot up with bow and arrows like we're in the wild, wild west. Nuclear clock bake... Can't even talk today. Nuclear clock breakthrough is another step forward in extreme timekeeping. Ultra-precise timekeeping has made major leaps in the last several years. There are clocks that are hundreds of times more accurate than the standard atomic clocks that are employed across the world. Those are known as optical atomic clocks and have set many records recently. But researchers think they can go even further. They can build a nuclear clock. The secret of extreme timekeeping is to be able to measure in an almost instantaneous beat. Well, atomic clocks, the beat is electrons jumping between energy levels. Traditional atomic clocks that is done using microwaves and cesium atoms. Optical atomic clocks which are way more accurate, scientists use different wavelengths and different atoms. Still, it's the electron transition that matters. But in nuclear clocks, the changes in energy levels are happening in the nucleus, which is a lot more stable compared to the electrons at the edge of the atom. It usually requires high energy light for these jumps to occur, namely X-rays, but scientists have known for a while that thorium-229 has the lowest energy jump of any atom. It requires ultraviolet light, which is much easier to use. The problem is that a precise value of the frequency for this jump was not known, so researchers have now used an extremely precise optical atomic clock, a crystal featuring thorium-229, laser to measure this value, the first crucial step, creating a whole... It's going to get even accurate. Imagine a wristwatch that wouldn't lose a second even if you left it running billions of years. Senior author John Ye from the National Institute of Standards and Technology said in a statement, while we're not quite there yet, this research brings us closer to the, that level of precision. And I think the last story here today uh, was that. So back on the air, I'm sorry for the long break. About traveling, doing some important work with my friends around the world. Make sure you check out that podcast I told you about. Make sure you stay tuned here to Interesting Times, the podcast with your boy, Beck Lover. I'll see you next time, tomorrow, interesting times on the Beck Podcast. Have a great day. Beck.